In talking politics, it is really easy, um, and frankly, it is really fun, to talk about candidates for office who have a high whack factor. Candidates who redline the kookometer, the kookometer, never sure which one it is. Uh, it, it, it is it, it's easy to talk about them. It is hard and it is less fun to talk about money in politics. But this year, the thing that is hard to talk about, money, and the thing that is very easy to talk about, kookiness, uh, those two things are inextricably related. You cannot have one of these things without the other. You cannot understand the kookiness of this year's slate of candidates without also understanding how cash is working in this year's elections. In order to help facilitate that understanding, we invented a graph last week. We call it our not a scientific graph of kookiness and electoral viability. Now, since first putting this graph on the air last week, we've realized that we were inadvertently aping the hot crazy scale um, from the TV show How I Met Your Mother. Wait, hot crazy scale? Let me illustrate. A girl is allowed to be crazy as long as she is equally hot. Thus, if she's this crazy, she has to be this hot. If she's this crazy, she has to be this hot. You want a girl to be above this line. Okay, we were not trying to have anything to do with Barney's hot crazy scale from that TV show from How I Met Your Mother. But it turns out the Rachel Maddow Show's not a scientific graph of kookiness and electoral viability works on exactly the same principle. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Uh, in terms of electoral viability, the kookiness of a candidate can be compensated for by the amount of money spent on their campaign. The overall point is that the viability of any given kook is unlimited. You can have the kookiest candidate in the entire world still be viable as long as you have all the money in the world to make that kooky candidate seem viable. And that's what explains the biggest shocker headline in politics today. That Sharon Engel, Sharon Engel, who is against fluoride, Sharon Engel, who says conservatives should be expected to take up arms, as in guns, if they don't get their way in this next election. Sharon Engel raised $14 million last quarter in her race against Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. I know, I know, it's just a number, 14 million, and there are lots of big numbers with dollar signs being talked about in this year's elections, but 14 million dollars for one Senate candidate in one quarter is a lot. It is a ton of money. It is a nearly record-setting amount of money. So it is one thing to talk about our friend Art Robinson from Oregon with his theories about AIDS being a government conspiracy and low-level radiation being good for you, so we should sprinkle nuclear waste into the oceans. Yeah, Art Robinson's kookiness is being offset by about $150,000 being spent on his behalf by unknown donors. And that does make Art Robinson seem way more viable than he otherwise would seem. Art Robinson... $150,000. Still not likely to be a viable candidate, still on the downside of viable. But Sharon Angle, $14 million. That compensates for a lot of kookiness. So Sharon Angle may be way, way out there on the kooky scale. The whole Second Amendment remedies thing arguably makes her even kookier than Art Robinson. But she is still electorally viable because she has so much money. Armed with her high kookiness factor, but a compensating massive infusion of cash, the latest polling shows Sharon Angle roughly tied with Harry Reid in Nevada, which means that on our graph she's sort of right on that line of viability. Sure, it's taken almost unprecedented fundraising to get her there, but apparently $14 million is about what it costs to turn a Sharon Engel into something resembling a feasible candidate in the United States of America. But again, the most important thing to remember about the kookiness graph, not a scientific graph, um, is that it does go on forever. So if Sharon Engel can figure out how to raise an infinite amount of money by going on Fox News and talking about her awesome website or whatever, her kookiness can theoretically extend infinitely as well. And she can remain a viable candidate. If she could double her latest quarterly cash haul, if she could raise $28 million, who knows what sort of kookiness she could get away with and stay viable. You watch, when she banks $50 million, she will admit on the campaign trail that she's really a four-headed space alien here to take over Earth by chewing through our abdominal cavities, human by human by human, and she'll still be tied with Harry Reid. And we'll need a bigger graph.